Hello again, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. And uh, by popular demand, uh, or at least the demand of one or two uh, very persuasive customers, I am going to be making a video revolving around our Radio Link high frequency radios, uh, showing you how to get them all set up, or at least how I set them up. Uh, for my RC submarine projects. But before we get into that, let's have a little chat about high frequency and low frequency radio. So if you are a fan of my page, and I sincerely hope that you are, you may have seen some videos where I talk about high frequency and low frequency radios. The fundamental difference between the two is that low frequency radios uh, do penetrate water to a pretty decent extent. In pure fresh water, you can get down 20 or 30 feet, depending how far away your boat is. Now that range uh, gets reduced when you start introducing things like chemical, mineral, or biological contaminants. Uh, particularly chlorine is kind of hard on these things. And of course, salt water, which would be classified uh, in that mineral bucket really, really reduces the effective range of low frequency radios. The issue is nobody is making them anymore. And so if you want that full diving capability, uh, mostly you are going to be looking at getting uh, old new stock or used stock from places like eBay or other vendors. So not an ideal situation. The alternative, uh, and I was put onto this by my good friend Ed Tortle, is a high frequency radio system. Now the drawback, uh, the only drawback to these high frequency systems is that you cannot fully submerge the submarine. The entire thing, with the exception of the very tip of the antenna, is going to be under the water. Um, this is not as big a deal as some people would lead you to believe. Any experience sub skipper working in an unknown body of water or even one that they are familiar with that does not have exceptionally good clarity will not dive the boat below periscope depth because of course it's hard to know where exactly it is and what is under the surface of the water so particularly for those of you who are thinking about operating in uh, large dark bodies of water or murky areas of water. And also for those of you with large RC submarines, I highly recommend the high frequency radios such as the Radiolink 89S Pro that we are gonna be taking a look at here shortly. So, hey, let's get started. All right, uh, this is what you kind of get out of the box. You've got your transmitter and your receiver. Uh, these units come standard with the R9DS. It's an eight channel receiver, which is more than enough for your standard functions for a remote controlled submarine. Now you can see it's got this like stubby little antenna on it. And what you're gonna need to do in order to use this in your RC submarine is extend uh, this antenna. And when you purchase these from my website, you get those extensions included in the price. And uh, it's a super easy thing to do. And actually you can see right through the inside there, right where my thumb is, it's just a little connector that snaps off and you snap the extension on and uh, put a little dab of uh, hot glue or something on there to make sure it doesn't come apart and you're good to go. Uh, you just run that antenna out your boat, trim back 1.25 inches uh, of the end of the coaxial insulator and you've got yourself an antenna extension perfect for running your submarine. Now what we're gonna do um, and the main purpose behind this is take a look at the radio and how uh, I set up the basic functions of the boat and how you go about navigating the menu in the transmitter. All right, here we are uh, looking at the uh, radio link transmitter. Uh, I put the batteries in, but I have done nothing else. So let's go ahead, power it on. Oh my gosh, throttle position, red alert. Um, we're gonna drop that down. Now it comes out of the box set up for helicopter and that's why it was yelling at you. It wants to make sure that your throttle uh, is down to zero, but that's not what we wanna do. So we're gonna press and hold the mode button here and we're gonna scroll to system. Hit the button and we're gonna to scroll to this third down, down thing. And we're gonna hit the button, flip it over to off, hit enter, 
and we're done. All right, that's all we need to do. And now that annoying alarm has, uh, has ended. So what I wanna do here, uh, first of all, is set the model type. You can see we've got a helicopter there right now, and that's not what we want. So we're gonna press and hold mode. Uh, we're gonna go to model type. Um, you can scroll through all of these different types of uh, models. Got boat type, you know, press and hold it. It says, are you sure? I'm gonna press and hold it again. boat excellent so now we've got a boat now we're gonna go in and change the uh, the name of this because uh, you've got up to 15 different um, models that you can all control with this radio so press and hold mode we're gonna go down to model select and uh, we've got model one which is what we're on right now and i'm going to switch this because i've got a, a type 7 build that i've got uh, coming up i'm going to use this radio for there we go boat type type 7. all right back out back at the main menu you can see this is a boat type it's our type 7 and now we are going to um, think about the kinds of things that you guys may need to do on a regular basis and the first one is um, reversing a servo so if you just hit this end you can see this menu pull up and this shows you all of the basic um, positions and associations of the different channels to the different controls so you can see the sticks that we've got going on here right now and uh, the different knobs going on and the different switches uh, and all that kind of stuff. So that just uh, is a little bit of a, uh, an indicator as to which channel is associated with which controls. So we're gonna back out here, press and hold mode. So let's say you've uh, hooked up your um, rudder and that rudder is typically put on the horizontal stick on the right, that's a channel one. And let's pretend it's going backwards. So when you push to the right, the model goes to the left. That's not good. So let's take a look at what you'd need to do to switch that around. We're gonna go to reverse, hit that. And we're gonna go to channel one, hit enter. See the flashing there and we're gonna reverse it. It says, are you sure? Press and hold. And now it is reversed. So now when we go left, the model goes left. And you can do this, uh, you know, for everything. If you, let's say, for example, your dive planes are the same situation. Uh, when you push forward on channel two, your boat wants to go up. That's not what we want. So we're just gonna hit enter, scroll over. Are you sure? Press and hold. Now that's reversed. You can scroll down and you can see the first two channels are reversed and all the other channels are normal. So that's the, the simple procedure for reversing your uh, servos. Now let's take a look at the um, endpoints. So for example, if you've got your rudder linkages uh, going and for whatever reason, when you reach, let's say halfway, it bottoms out. You know, you've got your full 30 degree deflection and anything more bends your linkages and the servos fighting um, rather than redoing all of your linkages, you can actually simply set your endpoint. So we'll go to endpoint, and uh, we were talking about our rudder, which is channel one. Uh, we're going to hit that, and you can see on the on the right, it's it's flashing, and if we move to the left, that's flashing. So you can set the endpoints individually for each side of that stick deflection. So let's say it's on the right. Hit enter. Oh, channel one, sorry. And we're just gonna scroll that back to, let's say 75%. And you can do this in real time. If you hold that stick over and scroll the wheel, your endpoint uh, linkage will actually pull back gently until um, all of that stress is relieved. So you can do that with every channel. Let's say, for example, your throttle is too fast. Um, you know, the boat's too fast, it's uncontrollable. Um, we're just gonna push up 
Now we're in the forward position. Hit the button, scroll it down. Let's say we need to go down to like 60%. Hit the button and we're good. Now the reverse is full and the forward is at 60%. If we want to adjust reverse, we simply pull back, hit the button, scroll that back to 60% as well. So that's how you adjust the endpoints for the various channels as well. So the last thing that uh, we're going to talk about is the functionality that is built into the receiver as an automatic failsafe. So when the boat drops below periscope depth, the failsafe automatically kicks in and brings it back up to the surface. And that is under the FS or failsafe menu. Now basically you can see every channel is all listed out and it's going to ask you what you want to do in the case of a loss of signal event. Now this is how I typically set my boats up. Channel one, which is rudder, I want normal. It'll just basically go to the middle position. Channel two, which is dive planes, I'm gonna hit that, I'm gonna switch to fail safe, hit enter, and I'm gonna uh, go to full rise. So I'm gonna go to full rise on the planes and push the button. Press and hold. Now you can see that position went to minus 70 right there. So in the, in the case of a loss of signal event, channel two will go to fail safe mode, position minus 70, which is full rise on the planes. Throttle. Um, is by default apparently set to 15%. Um, I don't want that. I want it to go to uh, zero. So I move the throttle to middle, press and hold. And uh, oh, I didn't quite get it. Let's try again. 48, 50, right halfway. We want our rudder to uh, go in the middle. And then I'm going to set up uh, channel seven, which we're going to do here in a moment, which is our stern planes. I'm going to have that go to um, full rise as well. And then the ballast system is going to be set uh, to blow. And uh, we'll put the ballast system on channel six. Now what we need to do is uh, basically associate all the various channels, you know, with what we want to do with the proper knobs and buttons. So if we take a look at the, at the radio, like up on top, for example, you can see switch C, switch D labeled. This is uh, all the various uh, buttons. They're all labeled with, uh, with letters. So if we, go back here to the main menu, you need to figure out what we want to do. So I'm going to go to aux channel, auxiliary channels, hit enter. So channel one, two, three, and four can't be changed. Those are your sticks. Channel one is your rudder. Two is your forward dive planes. Three is your throttle. Four is a spare channel, typically in my setup. Now let's take a look at, uh, at this right now. Channel five is switch F which is on the top of the unit right there. That's a, a two position switch. Um, that's fine. I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm actually going to switch this to null. It's not going to do anything. Channel six is going to be the ballast system. That's where I'm going to plug in my, my servo for my ballast system. And I want that on a three position switch. And I like switch C right here. This is a three position switch down, middle, and up. So I want that to be switch SW C. So now our ballast system is on this switch on the top and we can flick it up to go up, center position for neutral and down to submerge. Channel seven is already set up properly. I'm gonna plug my rear planes into channel seven. That's the rear plane override. And that is the switch on the back here, this proportional switch. And that's going to allow us to control the, um, the stern planes. Um, and that's called variable C. So there's variable A, B, uh, C and D on the back.
All right. Um, and that is basically all of the functions that you need to set up. So um, we've got our ballast system, we've got our stern planes override. Now you can actually switch all of these to null if you want to as well. But of course, if you add any additional functionality, you can uh, simply reassociate a switch with uh, whatever you want those to be. Well, there you go, guys. That's the really brief overview of the major functions that you're gonna need to worry about when you set up your uh, radio link system for operation with an RCE submarine. It may seem a little bit uh, confusing right now. Once you start playing with all of the functions and all of the menus and get used to it, it's actually super intuitive. Uh, and you'll find that you can adjust things when you're at the pond fairly easily to result in uh, nice, smooth, controllable operation of your boat. So if you have any questions, by all means, reach out to me anytime. Bob at NautilusDryDocks.com will be happy to help you out. Again, I'm a huge proponent of high-frequency radios in RC submarines, particularly big boats or boats operating in large, uh, dark bodies of water. So I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, I appreciate you checking me out. If you like these videos, please do like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I'm going to let you go. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus. Drydocks.com. We'll catch you next time.